Common diseases and disorders of the human digestive system. There are several diseases and disorders that can affect the human digestive system, including 1. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, a condition where stomach acid flows back into the esophagus, causing heartburn and other symptoms. 2. Ulcers, sores in the lining of the stomach or small intestine, usually caused by the bacteria Helicobacter pylori or by the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and SEDs. 3. Inflammatory bowel disease IBD, a group of conditions that cause chronic inflammation in the digestive tract, including Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. 4. Irritable bowel syndrome IBS, a functional disorder of the digestive system characterized by abdominal pain, bloating, and changes in bowel habits. 5. Celiac disease, a genetic autoimmune disorder in which the ingestion of gluten leads to damage in the small intestine. 6. Diverticulitis, inflammation or infection of small pouches diverticula in the colon. 7. Gallstones, hardened deposits of digestive fluid that can form in the gallbladder. 8. Pancreatitis, inflammation of the pancreas, which can be acute or chronic and is often caused by heavy alcohol use or gallstones. 9. Hepatitis, infection and inflammation of the liver, caused by a virus or alcohol abuse. 10. Colorectal cancer, cancer that begins in the colon or rectum, often developing from benign polyps. These are just a few of the many diseases and disorders that can affect the human digestive system. Early diagnosis and treatment are important for managing these conditions and preventing complications. Dental diseases. Dental diseases are disorders that affect the teeth and surrounding structures in the oral cavity. Some common dental diseases include 1. Tooth decay, the most common dental disease, caused by the buildup of bacteria on teeth that produce acid, leading to the breakdown of tooth enamel. 2. Gum disease, an infection of the tissues surrounding and supporting the teeth, caused by the buildup of plaque and tartar on teeth which leads to inflammation and eventual tissue damage. 3. Tooth sensitivity, a condition in which teeth become painful or sensitive to hot, cold, or sweet foods and drinks. 4. Tooth abscess, a pocket of pus that forms around the root of a tooth as a result of bacterial infection. 5. Oral cancer, cancer that develops in the tissues of the mouth or throat, often associated with tobacco and alcohol use. 6. Tooth erosion, a loss of tooth structure caused by chemical or physical factors, including acid erosion from acidic foods and drinks or brushing too hard. 7. Malocclusion, a misalignment of the teeth or jaws, often resulting in bite problems or orthodontic issues. 8. Temporomandibular joint TMJ disorder, pain and dysfunction of the TMJ, which can result in jaw pain, headaches, and difficulty chewing or speaking. Dental diseases can be prevented or treated through good oral hygiene practices, regular dental checkups, and lifestyle modifications such as avoiding tobacco and limiting sugary foods and drinks. Common dental diseases. 1. Dental caries, also known as tooth decay, it is caused by the buildup of bacteria on teeth that produces acid, leading to the breakdown of tooth enamel. Extra details. Dental caries, commonly known as tooth decay or cavities, is a bacterial infection that causes damage to the tooth structure, specifically the enamel and dentin. Bacteria produce acid when they consume carbohydrates, creating cavities and holes in the teeth over time. Symptoms of dental caries include tooth sensitivity, pain, and visible holes or pits in the teeth. Good oral hygiene practices, such as regular brushing and flossing and limiting sugary foods and drinks, can help prevent dental caries. If left untreated, dental caries can lead to more severe dental problems like infections, abscesses, and tooth loss. Treatment options for dental caries include fillings or crowns, root canals, or in severe cases, tooth extraction. 2. Periodontal disease, an infection of the tissues surrounding and supporting the teeth, caused by the buildup of plaque and tartar. It can lead to tooth loss if not treated. Periodontal disease, also known as gum disease, is a bacterial infection that affects the tissues that surround and support teeth. It is caused by the buildup of plaque and tartar on teeth, which leads to inflammation and eventual tissue damage. Symptoms of periodontal disease can include red, swollen, or bleeding gums, bad breath, receding gums, and loose or shifting teeth. If left untreated, periodontal disease can cause tooth loss and can even increase the risk of certain health conditions like heart disease and diabetes. Treatment for periodontal disease may include scaling and root planing, a deep cleaning of the teeth and gums, antibiotics, or surgery. Maintaining good oral hygiene practices such as regular brushing, flossing, and professional cleanings can help prevent periodontal disease. 3. Gingivitis, the earliest stage of gum disease, characterized by inflammation of the gums caused by the buildup of plaque and tartar. 
If not treated, it can progress to periodontal disease. Gingivitis is the mildest form of gum disease, characterized by inflammation of the gums. It is caused by the buildup of plaque on teeth, which can lead to bacteria accumulation and irritation of the gums. Symptoms of gingivitis include redness, swelling, tenderness, and bleeding of the gums. Gingivitis is reversible with proper treatment and good oral hygiene practices, including regular brushing, flossing, and professional cleanings. If left unaddressed, however, gingivitis can progress to more severe periodontal disease and may eventually lead to tooth loss. Maintaining good oral health habits is key to preventing gingivitis and other forms of gum disease. Dental hygiene. Dental hygiene is the practice of maintaining oral health and preventing dental problems. This includes regular brushing and flossing of teeth to remove plaque and bacteria, as well as maintaining a balanced diet and avoiding sugary and acidic foods and drinks. In addition to home care, proper dental hygiene also involves regular visits to the dentist for cleanings and checkups. Dental hygienists are trained professionals who provide preventative dental care, including cleanings, x-rays, and treatments for gum disease, and can provide guidance on proper dental hygiene practices. Good dental hygiene is important not just for oral health, but for overall health as well, as some health conditions such as heart disease and diabetes are linked to poor oral health. Constipation. Constipation is a digestive condition in which an individual experiences infrequent bowel movements or difficulty passing stool. It occurs when the colon absorbs too much water from the food and stool remains in the colon longer than usual. Symptoms of constipation may include painful bowel movements, bloating, and discomfort in the stomach. Constipation can be caused by a variety of factors, including a lack of fiber or fluids in the diet, a sedentary lifestyle, certain medications, or certain medical conditions. Treatment for constipation may include changes in diet and exercise, drinking more fluids, taking over-the-counter laxatives, or prescription medications in severe cases. Prevention measures include eating a high-fiber diet, staying hydrated, exercising regularly, and going to the bathroom when needed. Ulcers. Ulcers are open sores or wounds that develop on the skin or mucous membranes of the body. In the context of the digestive system, ulcers most commonly refer to peptic ulcers, which form in the lining of the stomach or upper part of the small intestine. Peptic ulcers are typically caused by an infection with the bacterium Helicobacter pylori, or by the use of certain medications such as nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and SEDs. Symptoms of peptic ulcers can include pain or discomfort in the upper abdomen, nausea, vomiting, and loss of appetite. Treatment for peptic ulcers may include antibiotics to clear the infection, medications to reduce stomach acid production, and or medications to coat and protect the lining of the stomach or small intestine. Other types of ulcers may have different causes and treatments, depending on their location and underlying conditions. Heartburn. Heartburn is a condition characterized by a burning sensation in the chest, often accompanied by a sour taste in the mouth or throat. It occurs when stomach acid backs up into the esophagus, the tube that carries food from the mouth to the stomach. Heartburn can be caused by a variety of factors, including eating spicy, acidic, or fatty foods, overeating, stress, or taking certain medications. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, is a chronic and more severe form of heartburn that may require long-term treatment. Treatment for heartburn may include over-the-counter antacids to neutralize stomach acid, medications to reduce stomach acid production, or dietary and lifestyle changes such as avoiding trigger foods and losing weight. In severe cases, surgical interventions may be necessary. Flatulence. Flatulence, also known as passing gas or farting, is a normal bodily function that involves the release of intestinal gas through the rectum. This gas is made up of swallowed air and byproducts of digestion, such as hydrogen, methane, and carbon dioxide. Flatulence can be caused by a variety of factors, including dietary choices, swallowing air, and certain medical conditions. Foods that are high in fiber, carbohydrates, or fructose, as well as foods that are difficult to digest, such as beans, cabbage, and onions, can contribute to increased flatulence. Certain medical conditions, such as lactose intolerance and irritable bowel syndrome IBS, may also cause increased flatulence. Treatment for flatulence may involve changes in diet and lifestyle, such as avoiding trigger foods and eating smaller meals more frequently. Over-the-counter medications, such as cimethicon, may also be used to alleviate symptoms. In some cases, additional medical treatment may be necessary, especially if flatulence is a symptom of an underlying medical condition. Indigestion. Indigestion, also known as dyspepsia, is a term used to describe a range of symptoms that occur in the upper digestive tract. 
The symptoms of indigestion may include upper abdominal pain or discomfort, bloating, nausea, and a feeling of fullness after eating. Indigestion can be caused by a variety of factors, including dietary choices, stress, and certain medical conditions. Common causes of indigestion include overeating or eating too quickly, consuming fatty or spicy foods, drinking alcohol or caffeine, and smoking. Indigestion may also be a symptom of more serious conditions, such as gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, or peptic ulcers. Treatment for indigestion may involve lifestyle changes, such as eating smaller, more frequent meals, avoiding trigger foods, and managing stress. Over-the-counter antacids or acid reducers may also help alleviate symptoms. In some cases, prescription medications, such as proton pump inhibitors PPIs, may be necessary to treat underlying conditions causing the indigestion. Revision Exercise 1. List the two main functions of the digestive system. The two main functions of the digestive system are 1. To break down food into smaller molecules that can be absorbed into the bloodstream and used by the body for energy, growth, and repair. 2. To eliminate waste materials and toxins from the body through the process of excretion. 2. Distinguish between mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion and chemical digestion are two different processes that occur during the digestion of food in the human body. Mechanical digestion refers to the physical breakdown of food into smaller pieces through actions such as chewing, grinding, and churning in the stomach by muscular contractions. Mechanical digestion helps to increase the surface area of the food, making it easier for enzymes to break down the food during chemical digestion. Chemical digestion, on the other hand, involves the breakdown of large molecules of food into smaller molecules through the use of enzymes and other chemicals in the body such as hydrochloric acid and bile. Chemical digestion begins in the mouth with the breakdown of carbohydrates by salivary amylase, and continues in the stomach and small intestine with the breakdown of proteins by pepsin and the breakdown of fats by lipase. In summary, mechanical digestion refers to the physical breakdown of food into smaller pieces, while chemical digestion refers to the breakdown of large molecules of food into smaller molecules through the use of enzymes and other chemicals. 3. Which enzyme completes the digestion of proteins in the ileum? The enzyme that completes the digestion of proteins in the ileum is called peptidase, also known as protease. Peptidase is produced by the cells lining the small intestine, and it breaks down protein fragments, also known as peptides, into smaller amino acids that can be absorbed into the bloodstream and used by the body for various functions such as building and repairing tissues, making hormones, and producing enzymes. 4. List the four stomach chambers of ruminants. The stomach of ruminants, such as cows, sheep, and deer, consists of four chambers, which are 1. Rumen, this is the largest chamber and serves as a fermentation vat where microorganisms break down cellulose and other plant fibers in the diet. 2. Reticulum, this chamber is where the particles of food are sorted and regurgitated for further chewing. 3. Omasum, the omasum is responsible for further processing of digesta, and absorption of some water, minerals, and electrolytes. Four. Abomasum, the fourth and final chamber of the ruminant stomach is the abomasum, which is similar to the stomach of monogastric animals, such as humans and pigs, as it secretes hydrochloric acid and enzymes to digest proteins, fats and carbohydrates from the fermented materials that passed through the previous three chambers. FAQs. 5. The main function of proteins in an animal body is to provide the building blocks for tissues and organs, and to act as enzymes, hormones, and transporters. Proteins are complex molecules made up of amino acids that are essential for the growth, maintenance, and repair of tissues in the body, including muscle, skin, hair, bones, and organs. Proteins also play a vital role in the immune system, acting as antibodies to fight off infections and diseases. Additionally, proteins can act as enzymes, which are biological catalysts that speed up chemical reactions in the body, as well as transporters, which help carry molecules, such as oxygen and nutrients, throughout the body. 6. The enzyme pepsin is produced by certain cells in the stomach, called chief cells. These cells release pepsinogen, which is a precursor to pepsin. Pepsinogen is then activated by hydrochloric acid HCl in the stomach, which converts it into pepsin. Pepsin is a protease enzyme that breaks down proteins into smaller peptides by breaking the peptide bonds between amino acids. Pepsin is important for the initial digestion of protein in the stomach before it is further broken down in the small intestine by other proteases such as trypsin and chymotrypsin. 7. The pancreas is the organ that secretes both the digestive enzyme and a hormone. The pancreas is a digestive gland located behind the stomach, and it plays a vital role in the digestion of food. 
The pancreas produces pancreatic juice, which contains various enzymes that help digest carbohydrates, fats, and proteins in the small intestine. One of the key enzymes in pancreatic juice is called pancreatic amylase, which breaks down carbohydrates into simple sugars, such as glucose. In addition to digestive enzymes, the pancreas also secretes hormones such as insulin and glucagon, which regulate blood sugar levels in the body. 8. Trypsin and pepsin are both protease enzymes that break down proteins, but they act in different locations in the digestive system and have different optimal pH ranges. Pepsin is produced in the stomach by chief cells and works best in a highly acidic environment, with an optimal pH range of 1.5 to 2.0. Pepsin breaks down proteins into smaller peptides. Trypsin, on the other hand, is produced in the pancreas and secreted into the small intestine. It is activated from its precursor, trypsinogen, by an enzyme called enterokinase that is produced in the small intestine. Trypsin works best in a slightly alkaline environment, with an optimal pH of around 8.0. Trypsin breaks down peptides into smaller peptides and individual amino acids. Overall, pepsin starts the process of protein digestion in the stomach, while trypsin continues the process in the small intestine. 8. Peristalsis is a series of coordinated muscle contractions that propel food and digestive substances through the digestive tract. It occurs in the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine. During peristalsis, muscles behind the food push it forward, while muscles in front of the food relax and allow it to move forward. This wave-like motion helps to mix and break down food, as well as move it along the digestive tract. Peristalsis is an involuntary process, meaning that we do not consciously control it. It is controlled by nerve impulses and hormones that signal the muscles to contract and relax in a coordinated manner. Any disruption to this process can lead to digestive problems such as constipation or diarrhea. 9. The dental formula is a shorthand method used to indicate the number and arrangement of the teeth in each quadrant of an animal's mouth. The dental formula for cats, pigs, rabbits, and dogs are 1. Cat 2. I3 slash 3, C1 slash 1, page 3 slash 2, M1 slash 1, equals 30. 2. Pig. 2. I3 slash 3, C1 slash 1, page 4 slash 4, M3 slash 3, equals 44. 3. Rabbit. 2. I2 slash 1, C0 slash 0, page 3 slash 2, M3 slash 3, equals 28. 4. Dog. 2, I3 slash 3, C1 slash 1, page 4 slash 4, M2 slash 3, equals 42. In each formula, the numbers represent the number of teeth in each quadrant of an animal's mouth, where I equals incisors, C equals canines, P equals premolars, and M equals molars. The numbers in the fraction indicate the number of teeth on one side of the jaw, with the numerator representing the upper jaw and the denominator representing the lower jaw. For example, in the cat formula, 2, I3 slash 3, means two upper and two lower incisors, with three on each side of the jaw. 10. The elephant tusks are elongated upper incisor teeth that grow continuously throughout an elephant's life. They are made of ivory, a dense and hard material composed of dentin and covered by enamel. Both male and female African elephants have tusks, while only some male Asian elephants have tusks. Elephants use their tusks for various purposes, including defense, offense, digging for water or minerals, and stripping bark off trees to eat. Unfortunately, elephants are hunted for their ivory tusks, which are highly valued in some cultures and have led to the decline in elephant populations. 11. Complete digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and lipids yields different end products. 1. Carbohydrates. The digestion of carbohydrates begins in the mouth with salivary amylase and is completed in the small intestine by pancreatic amylase. The end products of carbohydrate digestion are simple sugars, mainly glucose. 2. Proteins. Protein digestion begins in the stomach with the action of gastric acid and pepsin, and is completed in the small intestine by pancreatic enzymes such as trypsin and chymotrypsin. The end products of protein digestion are amino acids, which are absorbed into the bloodstream and used for various physiological functions, including the building and repair of tissues. 3. Lipids. Lipid digestion primarily occurs in the small intestine with the action of bile and pancreatic lipase. The end products of lipid digestion are fatty acids and glycerol. These end products are absorbed into the intestinal cells and then transported to other parts of the body for energy production or storage. 12. The two enzymes involved in digestion that prefer an alkaline medium are 1. Pancreatic lipase. This enzyme is secreted by the pancreas into the small intestine and is responsible for the breakdown of fats into fatty acids and glycerol. 
It works most efficiently in an alkaline environment, which is created by the secretion of bicarbonate from the pancreas. 2. Intestinal alkaline phosphatase. This enzyme is found on the surface of intestinal cells and plays a role in the digestion of proteins, nucleotides, and lipids. It is most active in an alkaline environment and is thought to contribute to the neutralization of gastric acid as chyme enters the small intestine. 13. Homodent and heterodent dentition are two types of teeth arrangement found in different animals. The main differences between these two types of dentition are as follows. 1. Homodent dentition. In homodent dentition, all teeth are identical in shape, size, and function. Animals that have homodent dentition include reptiles such as crocodiles and some fish. These animals use their homodent teeth to grip and swallow their prey whole. 2. Heterodent dentition. In heterodent dentition, teeth are different in shape, size, and function. Heterodent dentition can be found in mammals, including humans. Mammals use their different teeth for various purposes, such as biting, cutting, shearing, grinding, and tearing food. Heterodent dentition includes different types of teeth, such as incisors, canines, premolars, and molars. In summary, homodent dentition refers to a dental arrangement in which all teeth are identical in shape and function, while heterodent dentition refers to a dental arrangement in which teeth are different in shape and function. 14.1. The finger-like projections found in the small intestines are called villi. They increase the surface area of the small intestine for better absorption of nutrients. 2. An enzyme that coagulates casein into an insoluble curd is called renin or chymosin. It is produced in the stomach of infants and some animals and helps to digest milk. 3. The sphincter valve between the esophagus and the stomach is called the lower esophageal sphincter, LE. It is a ring of muscle that relaxes to allow food and liquids to enter the stomach and then tightens to prevent stomach contents from flowing back into the esophagus. 4. The salivary gland found in the cheeks and front of the ears is called the parotid gland. It produces saliva, which contains enzymes that begin the process of breaking down carbohydrates. 5. The removal of feces through the anus is called defecation. It is the final act of digestion, in which feces are eliminated from the body through the anus, which is the opening at the end of the digestive tract. 15. 1. Heterotrophism is a mode of nutrition in which an organism cannot produce its food and relies on other organisms for its nutritional needs. Heterotrophs consume organic matter to obtain energy and nutrients. 2. Symbiosis is a relationship between two or more different species of organisms. In symbiosis, the organisms interact with each other and live together in a long-term relationship. The interaction can be beneficial for one or both the organisms or neutral. 3. Parasitism is a type of symbiotic relationship in which one organism, known as the parasite, benefits at the expense of another organism, known as the host. Parasites live off the host's body, its organs, or its tissues, causing harm to the host, and sometimes even leading to its death. 4. Saprophytism is a mode of nutrition in which an organism feeds on dead organic matter. Saprophytes, also known as saprobes or decomposers, break down the complex organic matter into simpler compounds and absorb the nutrients for their survival. They play a vital role in recycling nutrients in the ecosystem. 16. Autotrophs and heterotrophs are two types of organisms that differ in their mode of nutrition. The main differences between autotrophs and heterotrophs are 1. Definition Autotrophs are organisms that can produce their food from inorganic substances using energy from the sun or chemicals, while heterotrophs are organisms that cannot produce their food and rely on other organisms for their nutritional needs. 2. Nutrient source. Autotrophs produce their own food using photosynthesis or chemosynthesis, while heterotrophs consume organic matter to obtain energy and nutrients. 3. Examples. Examples of autotrophs include green plants, algae, and some bacteria, while examples of heterotrophs include animals, fungi, and some bacteria. 4. Energy transfer. In the food chain, autotrophs are the primary producers that start the energy flow by producing their food, while heterotrophs are the consumers that consume the producers for their energy needs. 5. Carbon fixation. Autotrophs fix carbon from the atmosphere into organic molecules through photosynthesis, while heterotrophs cannot fix carbon and rely on pre-existing organic molecules for their nutrition. In summary, autotrophs are organisms that can produce their food from inorganic substances, while heterotrophs are organisms that cannot produce their food and rely on other organisms for their food and nutrition. 17. The dentition of a certain animal had the following characteristics. A. Large curved and sharply pointed canines b. Small and closely fitting incisors. c. Narrow molars and premolars with cusps. Suggest likely mode of feeding in this animal? 
Based on the dentition characteristics provided, the likely mode of feeding in this animal is carnivorous. The large, curved, and sharply pointed canines are typical of carnivorous animals, which use them to bite, stab, and hold prey. The small and closely fitting incisors suggest that they are less important for biting or cutting and are probably used more for holding and manipulating prey. The narrow molars and premolars with cusps are also characteristic of carnivorous animals and are designed for shredding and shearing flesh. Therefore, the combination of large, curved, and sharply pointed canines, small and closely fitting incisors, and narrow molars and premolars with cusps, all suggest that this animal is adapted to catching and consuming meat, and is likely a carnivorous predator. 18. Name two enzymes found along the alimentary canal which break down carbohydrates and in each case state the site of production, the substrate and product. Two enzymes found along the alimentary canal which break down carbohydrates are 1. Amylase. Site of production, salivary glands and pancreas. Substrate, starch and glycogen. Product, maltose. 2. Maltase. Site of production, small intestine intestinal glands. Substrate, maltose. Product, glucose. Amylase is an enzyme produced by the salivary glands in the pancreas. Salivary amylase begins breaking down carbohydrates, starch and glycogen in the mouth, while pancreatic amylase continues the process in the small intestine. The end product of amylase digestion is maltose, a disaccharide. Maltase is another carbohydrate digesting enzyme that is produced by the small intestine's intestinal glands. It specifically breaks down maltose into glucose monomers, which can then be absorbed into the bloodstream and used for energy. 19. A. Uh, why is food broken into small pieces in both man and ruminants? B. How many chambers does food go through in ruminants before it reaches the small intestine? A. Uh, in both man and ruminants, food is broken into small pieces to increase the surface area to volume ratio of the food. This helps to increase the efficiency of the digestive process by exposing a larger surface area of the food to digestive enzymes, allowing for faster and more complete digestion. Smaller pieces of food are also easier to move through the digestive tract, reducing the amount of energy and effort required for digestion and absorption. B. Food in ruminants goes through four chambers before it reaches the small intestine. These four chambers are the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. Ruminants have a specialized digestive system that allows them to break down tough plant material, such as cellulose, with the help of microbial fermentation. In the rumen, microbes break down the plant material into smaller particles, which then pass through the other chambers before being further digested and absorbed in the small intestine. 20. Identifying the mode of feeding of an animal's from dental formula. The dental formula of an animal can provide some clues about its mode of feeding. The dental formula expresses the number and type of teeth an animal has in each of its jaws. For example, carnivorous animals have a dental formula that typically includes long, sharp, pointed teeth called canines, which are used to catch, hold, and kill prey. They also have sharp-edged, blade-like teeth called carnassials, which are used for slicing and shearing meat. Carnivorous animals have a small number of molars, which are typically sharp and pointed, and are used for crushing and grinding bone. Herbivorous animals, on the other hand, have a dental formula that is specialized for grinding and crushing fibrous plant material. Herbivorous animals have broad, flat molars with ridges and cusps that form a grinding surface. They typically have large incisors at the front of their jaws that are used for clipping and biting off vegetation, and smaller, peg-like front teeth called premolars, which help to hold and grind the food before it is passed back to the molars for further grinding. Omnivorous animals, which eat both plants and animals, have a dental formula that is a combination of the features of carnivorous and herbivorous animals. They have moderately pointed canines and incisors for catching and biting prey or vegetation, and flat molars for grinding and crushing food. Therefore, by examining the dental formula of an animal, it is possible to determine whether it is primarily carnivorous, herbivorous, or omnivorous. 21. In which region of the mammalian digestive tract does digestion of fats begin? In the mammalian digestive tract, digestion of fats primarily begins in the small intestine. Specifically, the digestion of fats begins in the duodenum, which is the first segment of the small intestine, where bile salts and lipases, enzymes that break down fats, are released from the gallbladder and pancreas, respectively. Bile salts emulsify and break down large fat globules into smaller droplets, which increases the surface area available for lipid digestion by lipases. The lipases then break down the triglycerides fats, into fatty acids, monoglycerides, and glycerol, which can be absorbed by the small intestine and eventually used as a source of energy. 22. List four components of pancreatic juice. 
Pancreatic juice is a digestive fluid secreted by the pancreas into the small intestine. It contains a variety of components that aid in the digestion of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Four important components of pancreatic juice are 1. Pancreatic amylase. This enzyme helps to break down carbohydrates such as starch and glycogen into smaller sugar molecules like glucose. 2. Trypsin and chymotrypsin. These enzymes help to break down proteins into smaller peptides and amino acids. 3. Pancreatic lipase. This enzyme aids in the digestion of fats by breaking down triglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. 4. Bicarbonate ions. These help to neutralize the acidic chyme partially digested food mixed with stomach acid that enters the small intestine from the stomach, creating a more favorable pH environment for the digestive enzymes to function properly. 23. A. State the role of epiglottis in man. B. List three functions of the tongue during digestion in the mouth. C. Mucus is secreted all along the gut state two functions of mucus and digestion. D. Name two enzymes that are secreted in their inactive, precursor, forms. E. List four functions of the hydrochloric acid in the digestion. F. State the functions of the cardiac sphincter in the stomach. G. What is the role of liver in digestion? A. The epiglottis is a flap of tissue located at the base of the tongue that prevents food from entering the trachea, windpipe during swallowing. It covers the opening of the trachea during swallowing to direct food and liquid into the esophagus. B. Three functions of the tongue during digestion in the mouth are 1. Mixing food with saliva. The tongue helps to mix food with saliva to make it easier to swallow and initiate the digestion of carbohydrates with the enzyme amylase. 2. Forming a bolus. The tongue helps to form a bolus, which is a ball of food that can be easily swallowed and passed down the esophagus. 3. Moving food around the mouth. The tongue assists with moving food around the mouth to ensure that all surfaces are exposed to saliva and digestive enzymes. C. Mucus is secreted all along the gut and serves two main functions in digestion. 1. Lubrication. Mucus helps to lubricate the food and protect the lining of the gut from damage by digestive acids and enzymes. 2. Protection. Mucus provides a barrier between the lining of the gut and harmful substances such as bacteria, toxins, and other irritants. D. Two enzymes that are secreted in their inactive precursor form are pepsinogen and trypsinogen. Pepsinogen is converted to the active enzyme pepsin in the stomach, while trypsinogen is activated to trypsin in the small intestine. E. Four functions of hydrochloric acid in digestion are 1. Killing pathogens. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach creates an acidic environment that helps to kill bacteria and other pathogens that may be present in food. 2. Denaturing proteins. Hydrochloric acid helps to denature proteins in food, making them more susceptible to digestion by enzymes. 3. Activating enzymes. Hydrochloric acid activates the enzyme pepsinogen, which is a precursor to pepsin, which is responsible for the breakdown of proteins in the stomach. 4. Breaking down connective tissue. Hydrochloric acid helps to break down the tough connective tissue found in meat, making it easier to digest. F. The cardiac sphincter is a ring of muscle located at the opening from the esophagus to the stomach. Its main function is to prevent acid in the stomach from flowing back up into the esophagus, which can cause damage to the lining of the esophagus and lead to conditions such as gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD. G. The liver plays a vital role in digestion by producing bile, which is stored in the gallbladder and released into the small intestine to aid in the digestion and absorption of fats. Bile contains bile salts, which emulsify fats and help to break them down into smaller droplets for more efficient digestion by lipase enzymes. The liver also processes and stores nutrients, detoxifies harmful substances, and produces important proteins such as albumin and clotting factors. 24. State two adaptations of herbivores which enable them to digest cellulose. Herbivores have two major adaptations that enable them to digest cellulose. 1. Specialized stomachs. Many herbivores have specialized stomachs that contain microorganisms, such as bacteria and protozoa, which are capable of breaking down cellulose. These microorganisms can digest the cellulose and release nutrients that can be absorbed by the host animal. For example, ruminants like cows, sheep, and deer have multi-compartment stomachs that allow them to ferment and digest cellulose and plant material effectively. 2. Longer digestive tract. The digestive tract of herbivores is usually longer than that of carnivores, allowing more time for cellulose digestion. The longer tract provides more opportunities for the breakdown of cellulose and allows for greater absorption of nutrients. Additionally, some herbivores, such as rabbits and horses, practice coprophagy, which involves eating their own feces to help further break down cellulose and obtain additional nutrients. 25. 
In what ways can dental caries be prevented? Dental caries can be prevented in the following ways. 1. Regular brushing and flossing. Brushing twice daily with fluoride toothpaste and flossing once a day can help remove plaque and prevent the buildup of harmful bacteria that cause dental caries. 2. Maintaining a healthy diet. Limiting sugary drinks and snacks and consuming a diet rich in calcium and phosphorus can help maintain healthy teeth and prevent tooth decay. 3. Fluoride treatments. Fluoride treatments, such as fluoride varnish or fluoride mouthwash, can help strengthen tooth enamel and prevent dental caries. 4. Sealants. Dental sealants can be applied to the chewing surfaces of molars to provide a protective barrier against dental caries. 5. Regular dental checkups. Regular dental checkups and cleanings can help detect and treat dental caries in the early stages before they become more serious. 26. A student of Anderlecht Ridges High School in Cahama Municipal Council found two skulls in a national park. Skull A had jaws which had a gap where canines usually occur. It had no incisors in the upper jaw. The molars had sharp ridges. The upper and lower molars fitted well into each other. Skull B had long canines and the molars were flattened. Uh, I. What diet was animal A likely to have been adapted to be feeding on? 2. What diet was animal B likely to have been adapted to be feeding on? B. 1. What is the name of the gap the student observed between the molars and incisors? 2. What role does this gap play in the living animal? 3. Why are the molars from specimen A sharp ridged and well fitted? C. 1. What is the role of sharp canines in B? 2. What role would flattened molars play in B? Uh, I. Skull A is likely to have been adapted to a herbivorous diet, probably feeding on tough plant material such as leaves, twigs, and bark. 2. Skull B is likely to have been adapted to a carnivorous diet, probably feeding on meat or other animal protein. B. 1. The gap observed between the molars and incisors in skull A is called a diastema. 2. In the living animal, the diastema in skull A is believed to be an adaptation for feeding on tough plant material. The gap allows the animal to grasp and manipulate food more effectively, while the sharp ridged molars are used to grind and break down tough plant material for digestion. 3. The sharp ridges on the molars in skull A are an adaptation for grinding and breaking down tough plant material more effectively. The well-fitted molars allow the animal to chew food more thoroughly, increasing the surface area exposed to digestive enzymes. C. 1. The sharp canines in skull B are likely to have played a role in capturing and killing prey. The canines are used to puncture and hold onto the prey while the animal feeds. 2. The flattened molars in skull B are an adaptation for crushing and shearing meat. The molars are used to break down tough connective tissue and grind meat into smaller pieces that are easier to digest.